At MLA this year, we, um, for the first time ever, did a sunrise presentation, and we introduced an audience of 50 medical librarians to, many of them had seen Visual DX, had Visual DX at their sites, understand the product, but we started with a PowerPoint overview that I'm going to do today because it provided a lot of the background about the product that oftentimes we don't think about. With Visual DX, I think it's important to start with why the product is needed. And, you know, last fall, the Institute of Medicine released a report regarding diagnostic error. Um, they had done a report many years prior on to Air as Human, and they did a report that they released last September that focused on diagnostic error. And one of the most profound statements in that overview was nearly every person will experience a diagnostic error in their lifetime. And if we think about that, you know, all the people, you know, our families, our friends, all the people who work where we work, you know, the people in our cities, it becomes an overwhelming number of diagnostic errors that are going to occur at any given time. And in that same report, um, the Institute of Medicine had several goals. And goal three was to ensure that health information technologies support patients and healthcare professionals in the diagnostic process. No product was mentioned by name, and there are, you know, several products that fit into this space. But as we move through the rest of our presentation on Visual DX, it does really assist healthcare professionals in the diagnostic process. And then a couple months ago, um, there was a publication in the BMJ that talked about medical error and stated that medical error is the third leading cause of death in the United States. Now, I read this report, and maybe you have also, and it said that if medical error was assigned a DRG, because it's really not tracked, it would be this third leading cause, and over 250,000 deaths on average occur each year due to medical errors. Now today, we're gonna to focus on diagnostic error, which is you know, a subcategory under medical errors. But if the use of Visual DX can help save one life, then it's more than paid for itself at your institution. And how do these errors occur? If we look at this line, or where I go to the doctors, it's a room full of chairs. But what we see are just patient after patient after patient waiting to go see the physician. Um, primary care physicians are constantly switching gears, you know, from one complaint to the next, a rash or a feigning spell or chest pain or breathing difficulty. And, you know, sometimes they close prematurely. You know, they're busy, they're having a busy day, there's all kinds of things going on. They listen to part of the story and quickly jump to a premature closure. Or maybe in the last week, they've seen 10 patients with the same signs and symptoms, and they don't listen any further, and they anchor on a diagnosis around the finding of dizziness, and maybe could miss something like a severe stroke. And, you know, this is, depicts the challenge and the challenge of diagnostic error. Surgical and medical errors, they're very visible to everyone. I mean, we hear about them in the news, you know, the wrong limb being amputated, the wrong dose of heparin being given to young babies. But it's those errors under the surface that contribute to this challenge that we need to be thinking about. You know, the errors related to outpatient office visits or inpatient hospital deaths or adverse events. Um, those contribute, you know, there's 18 million diagnostic errors each year. So I fly a lot, and whenever I see this picture, it makes me think of what plane I would want to get into to get safely to my destination. Is it that old-fashioned plane on the left, or is it the plane on the right with all the latest specialized tools to guide the pilots to land the plane safely? I don't know about everybody on the line, but I would feel pretty uncomfortable, too, because we hear a lot about Google. Oh, I looked it up on Google. In fact, a physician I was talking to yesterday said he's horrified when he hears that from residents. But think about it. Would you want your pilot to quickly Google 
how to land in St. Louis. Nope, you would want them to have that plane on the right with all the specialized instruments. So Visual DX is that specialized solution. It enhances diagnostic accuracy, aids therapeutic decisions, and improves patient safety because it leads to diagnoses that the physicians may not have thought about or considered for the differential. So we also know that in a clinical setting at the point of care, speed is a necessity. Tools need to work quickly, but they need to be accurate. And with Visual DX, students, residents, librarians, and clinicians can search for a diagnosis, they can build a differential, and they can see adverse medication reactions. And I'll be showing all of those to you during our quick demo of the product. So what is Visual DX? So here, we do all the work on the Visual DX content. Um, I thought everybody would find it very interesting that we have just over 30 full-time employees here, and four of them are medical librarians, and you're seeing their happy faces here. And what they do is they research, write, build, and review the content, and then vet it with our dozens of physician editors and leaders. But they are doing a lot of the research behind the scenes to make Visual DX what it is. So what is Visual DX? It's a relational database of concept-to-concept -concept relationships, text, images, references, codes, and other meta metadata. Um, building a differential involves a structured search of one or several findings to diagnosis relationships. Our reference interface is proprietary, and we use um, terminology for findings and diagnoses mapped to the terminology standards, such as SNOMED, UMLS, and Rx norm. And our, though our content is curated libra by librarians and physician researchers, everything is reviewed carefully by our physician team. So we get asked a lot about the numbers. What's in Visual DX? So there are 2,700 diseases, though I'm told that many of our findings are also diseases. Um, and we have 35,000 medical images. That includes our new Symptacons in our latest release, and we have 110,000 symptoms to disease relationships. So Visual DX is changing the paradigm in medicine. Um, if we think of the 20th century, um, many of us may even remember these days, everything was memory-oriented. The decisions that students, residents, and physicians made were unaided. They had white coats with pockets full of manuals to quick look things up. I still remember years ago when I first started working in pharmaceutical sales, everybody had a Stanford guide in their pocket so they could look up information about antibiotics. They modeled roundsmanship, but they didn't let their patients know they weren't sure what was going on. Things are certainly different now. Um, everything is process-oriented. Students, residents, physicians, nurse practitioners, PAs, they can make ex assisted decisions. They have smartphones, they have iPads, they have the tools that allow them to connect to where the information is very, very quickly, and they're not afraid to acquire this information. Even on rounds, the tools are used. And they share the decision making with their patient. As you can see in this image, the physician showing the patient information on the iPad about what's going on. So what makes Visual DX different? Visual DX allows you to visualize. And even with our latest update where we expanded to diseases that don't present on the skin, we're using the Symptacon that you see depicted here to help clinicians visualize a disease. And a Symptacon is a human diagram where we put the symptoms for that particular diagnosis around it, and we highlight the diseases, I mean, the organs that are involved, so clinicians can readily picture what might be going on with their patient. So let's do something that's fun. If you look on the left, you'll see a description. It's text-based, and if you read this, it's a Caucasian male, mid-50s, thin, long face, dark hair and a beard, and dressed in a suit and tie. I mean, could you really narrow down anything with that description? It could be anyone. 
but it is a description for Abraham Lincoln. And when we see his picture, we can clearly recognize him. The same works with diagnoses. The patient is described as having a fever, multiple skin lesions. They developed acutely over days to weeks. They appear ill. They're, they have malaise. The patient told us they traveled to El Salvador and they were bitten by a mosquito. But we're still thinking through all of those findings and just trying to figure out what the differential is. But Visual DX will quickly depict that using the symptoms. You can see all these mosquito-borne illnesses that we hear about, many of them we hear about in the news, chikungunya, dengue, and Zika virus. That description on the left fits them all. So the other thing that makes Visual DX different, and we'll talk about this a little bit as we move through the product demonstration, is there are guided workups based on the chief complaint of the patient. So you'll see different workups if the patient is vomiting or has eye pain or took naproxen or has a fever. And that's the start of building the differential. And the workups are, are customized based on the chief complaint. So Visual DX also is good because it's a very visual tool. It helps clinicians or librarians or anyone using the product to engage with patients. Um, it changes the nature of the discussion from proving accuracy to really focusing on the treatment plan and management. Allowing the patient to see the information helps calm them. Um, you can use the images to connect with the patient, and we hear this all the time where clinicians turn their device to the patient and say, see this image, this is what you have, and this is why we're going to proceed with the treatment plan the way we will. And we also have um, patient handouts in Visual DX for common diseases. So really, in summary, you know, seeing the, you can see the difference in what makes Visual DX what it is as compared to other resources that you may provide. It is made by doctors for healthcare professionals. It allows clinicians to get a second opinion in minutes, contains concise information for the point of care. There are other reference, online reference resources that provide lots and lots of information. Visual DX is concise and tailored for the point of care. The content in Visual DX and the diagnoses can help minimize risk. We do have a partnership with a malpractice insurer based in Massachusetts, and they actually believe very strongly in the program and will offer their insureds a policy discount if they use Visual DX. We do, um, we can have our physician leader do training for your site if that would help, you know, with the awareness of Visual DX. And we also have a quiz feature in our Apple and Android versions that helps with study and exam preparation. So no presentation would be complete without some information about, you know, that shows that to validate what we're doing. We've been in existence here for about 15 years. Um, Visual DX is already used at over half the U.S. medical schools. We're installed, Visual DX is installed in over 1,500 large hospitals and clinics. Um, our largest client is um, the VA. They have a national install that covers all of their sites, and we've been working with them for over six years. Our search technology is patented. And for those of you that are familiar with CLASS, we have been the category leader for clinical decision support, point of care, clinical reference tools ever since that category was started in 2011. And some of the products that are in that category are Dynamed, UpToDate, Micromedx, Lexicomp, products that we all know. And we have ranked at the top of the list as the category leader. Down at the bottom are just, is just some testimonials and some clients that we work with. Here are some physicians that are part of an advisory panel that we have. Um, this is from a family medicine leader at the University of Nebraska who says that Visual DX is a tool that helps reduce errors. Jamie Shoemaker, who works in Indiana, um, emergency physician who says that he likes to use Visual DX when he teaches residents and students. And 
This quote is from a pediatric chief resident here in Rochester who talks about the value in education. The other things that are important to note about Visual DX can be integrated into the top electronic record system. We have a good amount of experience with Epic and Cerner, and um, also we can integrate into other resources that you use, like UpToDate. So again, we're right in the workflow, which is where you would want a resource like this so physicians can access it very easily. Um, for those of you who have set up Visual DX Access, you know that it's web-based. There's no installation required, and once you give us your IP addresses, your users can access in a matter of just hours or minutes. Mobile access is included at all of our institutional sites, and again, we can be, we're interoperable within UpToDate and LexiComp. We do, um, you can get CME for the use of Visual DX. If anyone has any questions about that, let me know, and I'll send you some information about the process. But um, physicians that use Visual DX and track that use to an individual account can earn and claim CME. It's AMA, PRA, Category 1. It's a half a credit. Um, we also know that clinical librarians use Visual DX at the bedside for education, um, also on rounds and doing during their education on point of care resources. Some of the things that are done is look up a diagnosis, build a differential, look at the images to see the variation of disease, um, share patient education sheets, and look at medication reactions. So this is the home page of Visual DX. I just want to point out a few things first before we get into the product. If you have someone that wants to create their own mobile account so they can download our apps, they would click here and just create their own individual account. Um, I'm going to click on the CME certification, and basically you're creating the same type of account, the same account. So if somebody has a mobile account and they're using Visual DX on their mobile device, we're tracking their session so they can earn CME. Here, sometimes sites choose to put links and information. So with Visual DX, again, you can enter a chief complaint, a medication, a diagnosis, or search by a finding. So I'm going to start very quickly with some searches, just so you can see just how the content appears on the screen and how the images appear. So for every diagnosis in Visual DX, and again, there are 2,700, the text for those diagnoses is set up in this, in this same style. There's a navigation panel down the left. The text appears in the middle. And the symptoms and images appear on the right. Now, because I did my search on poison ivy, something we're all very familiar with, um, I'm going to show you the types of images that we have, different body parts. Um, up here on the top, we can even change our skin color. And now we're only looking at dark-skinned images of poison ivy. Um, one thing, we do have a good number of dark-skinned images within Visual DX that allow you to see the variation in disease. I could also change the view to see the images in children if my patient was a child. So I'm going to just point out a few things in the text. Again, you can see this text is very concise designed to be read at the point of care. What we hear often is from clinicians is that they build their differential with Visual DX, read the text, and if they still need a deeper dive into the disease, they often use a tool like UpToDate or Dynamed. You can see we have a there's a synopsis, the ICD-10 codes, the SNOMED code, um, what to look for, diagnostic pearls, the textbook differential, and all of these blue links are hyperlinks, so you could move to that diagnosis very quickly. Best test, management perils, and therapy. So that was a quick search by disease. We can also search for a drug to see the drug reactions. So I typed in naproxen, and if you recall from our PowerPoint, 
we talked about, I talked about the customized workups that you'll see in the new version of Visual DX. So here is the workup for naproxen. We could answer these questions if we were so inclined, or we can just click to view this differential. And so what we're now seeing diagnoses or reactions that could possibly occur in a 50 to 59-year-old female that took naproxen. Now, this diagram, again, is the Symptacon. You can see here, when we look at anaphylaxis, the findings are all listed here, and the body parts that are impacted by anaphylaxis are colored. Up here along the top nav, we can also change from the Symptacon view, which is um, the default view for this search, to a photo view. And so we can see all of the reactions that have a visual component. So then we can also search by findings. So let's say we wanted to start our search very quickly. Um, a patient that's in our emergency room just came back from a medical mission in Haiti. So I'm starting my, my search with Haiti, and I'm taken to a customized workup. Again, I could answer some questions. or I could just click view the differential very quickly. It's just dependent on what the physician is looking for. So those are all the types of searches. Again, I could also search by a skin lesion type and talk about, you know, answer some findings questions. So there are thousands of findings in Visual DX and you can search by them. But I really want to show you how to think in terms of the chief complaint of the patient. So they come into the emergency room or into the physician's office, and they're vomiting. So again, here's our customized workup for vomiting. And we're going to answer a few questions about our patient based on the history that they've given us. So our patient, you know, talked about some dizziness and it's come on, you know, rapidly, and they just don't feel very well. So we'll click our blue button that says view this differential, and we're taken into the differential. Now, we can certainly narrow down this differential by entering more findings. I'm trying to move through this for the purpose of this demonstration, so I certainly haven't entered as much as I could. But one of the first things to consider here is vertigo. And here you can see how we can start to view the diagnosis details. So last fall, we were at the emergency physicians meeting, and a physician came up to us. We hadn't released this version yet, and he was just curious how thorough we were with our research and our work. And they talked about a patient that had come into their emergency room who said he had a toothache. And the only other finding that he complained of was fatigue. And I'm going to show you how you can change the age of the patient over here. So this patient was in his 60s, and it was a male. So because they, you know, thought the patient just had a toothache and was just a bit tired, the ER was very, very busy, and they let him sit for a while and then realized later that he was having a heart attack. And if you see here, by just entering those two findings for a male that's 60 to 69 years old, you can see that myocardial infarction is the first diagnosis that we should consider. The diagnosis with the red bars across the top mean life-threatening, and we should really you know, take that very seriously if that's what we suspect. I'm gonna do one more search. So again, just to show the true variation in what you can do with Visual DX, I'm going to say our patient um, has come into the office and they have eye pain and they have some redness and their eyes feel pretty gritty and they're a contact lens wearer. So again, you can see the differential diagnosis strength at the top. Um, there's a strong relationship between the chief complaint and the findings that we've entered. I'm going to change the age of our patient. 
and I'm going to click View This Differential. Now here, the default setting is to show you the images first, because as when you think of eye disease, Visual DX has images of the eye diseases. So rather than show the symptoms, though we could change to that view, we're showing you the photos of the different diagnoses. And you know, our patient has, we suspect strongly, has a corneal abrasion because they wear contact lenses. So I could go on and show you many more examples, but I'm really curious to hear if the group has any questions. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Take care everyone.